Hello and welcome to another episode of my Datsun 280Z Project Car Build. I'm Dave, this is Grand House Performance Engineering, and in today's episode, I'm designing and 3D printing some custom headlight buckets. I learned a lot, and I hope you enjoy the video. Stay tuned. So as you guys remember, I've got a fiberglass kit on the car and there's no real provisions to mount the factory uh, headlight buckets inside them. You might be able to, but I can't figure out a good way to do it without hogging out um, this whole section like really aggressively and then it, I don't think it'll look quite right. So I'm gonna work on a couple different designs for some different tools to be able to work in this area. On the stock car, the fender's actually in two pieces. Um, it's cut here, actually I'll show you. The, the original bucket, is one piece here and then the rest of the fender is another piece and then what happens is the rest of the fender is bolted in place the entire headlight bucket assembly bolts to the fender um, and then the nose cone for the headlight bolts over top of that um, so since this is all in one piece i don't think i can really use any of that stuff without having it be really really ugly looking so the headlight I chose is an OE7 from Dapper Lighting. Um, you can see right next to the original, I thought it did a really good job playing to the original, but then modernizing it being an LED projector. It actually has a glass housing and I love the way that it looks. I'm glad that it doesn't have like the, the angel eyes or like the big modules or anything like that. I think this does a really cool job um, paying almost a little bit of a tribute to the original while having all update innards and stuff like that. The first thing I needed to figure out was how the assemblies would mount to the fiberglass. I knew that I wouldn't be able to access any of the hardware from the front side, so I started experimenting using rubber well nuts. As the bolt tightens, it pulls and expands the rubber against the back side of the plastic, keeping everything in place. I think these will work really well because of the rubber isolation, and they're commonly used to bolt fender flares on cars. I printed test pieces in a bunch of different diameters to see how well they grip the plastic, and I've also added a chamfer to help give a little bit more surface area for the well nut. Now that we've experimented with these a little bit, I really like the idea of using the well nuts, and I'm gonna go ahead and I printed this first piece here, which is the outside trim ring. This is gonna be the one that goes on the outside of the headlight housing here on the front, and this is gonna bolt um, with the well nuts basically sticking up through them uh, like, like this. Um, so this means that all the bolts are going to run through the back and then it's going to squeeze on the front side here kind of in this cavity that you won't be able to see in, in here and in here and in these kind of tight spaces um, that you won't be able to see. But the problem is we need to figure out now that we have the bolt pattern for that front piece how to find the center mark here and be able to drill the center, hog this out, and accurately drill those four holes, um, which we need to be able to do from the backside because those four holes are kind of tucked in these corners and we can't get to it from the front. To be able to locate and drill the mounting holes from the back side of the fiberglass, I've come up with a couple tools to use as a drill guide. In this model, the gray panel represents the piece of fiberglass needing to be drilled, the blue part will sit on the front of the headlight to give us the center, and the red part will give us the mounting flange for the headlight bucket assembly. I might have overcomplicated this, but this was all I can come up with to give me the center mark and the mounting flange location to be exactly the same on both sides of the fiberglass. I'm using the handheld belt sander just to get myself a little bit of extra clearance for the front trim rings to get them to sit in place. All right, so now that there's a little bit extra clearance here, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. There is absolutely no way that these four mounting holes can get drilled from the front. So they need to get drilled from the back side of this piece of fiberglass. And the only way to find exactly where those four points are, I believe is gonna be using these sets of drill guides. So this one's gonna be going on the front side and that's gonna give us the center hole for the exact center of the headlight um, area. And then this one is going to come in from the back side. And then these four holes here are going to be our drill guides that correspond 
to these four mounting holes that are on uh, the front side of this trim ring. I'm using Clico fasteners, which are commonly used in the aircraft industry as temporary rivets to hold the drill guide to the fiberglass. I'll include a link in the description if you're interested in picking up the set. The last and most complicated piece of the puzzle is the rear bucket. The rear bucket's what actually holds the headlight in place against the outer trim ring and I think it's the coolest part I've printed so far. I've added features to clearance the different parts of the headlight, a dedicated place for a fir tree zip tie, and I've even included a mounting boss for the LED projector module. The features I'm adding will really tie everything together and make the wiring super compact and tidy for assembly. I'm pretty excited. Both the outer trim ring and rear bucket were printed with PETG with 100% infill. This was my first time printing with PETG and it took a little bit of playing with the initial layer settings to adhere to the build plate. I also found the supports were pretty difficult to remove. I tried printing the PETG with PLA supports but it didn't bond whatsoever to the PLA. Let me know in the comments if you have any advice on this because I'm going to be printing a lot in PETG in the future. To be able to bolt the LED module to the rear bucket, I'm using a soldering iron and temperature setting nuts. The heat from the soldering iron melts the surrounding plastic and lets the nuts sink right into the bosses. So I've got both sides installed now. Um, it was a little bit tricky um, when everything was loose to get the first bolt started just because of how everything kind of floats until it's really cinched together. Um, but now that it's in, it's, it looks awesome. So um, we've got the modules mounted up here. It fits awesome. The wiring has plenty of slack. Nothing's really strained. Actually, this will really help it um, from vibrating loose. It keeps everything super tidy and compact in this little package here. Um, so I'm really happy with that. Um, other than that, um, mounts up great. It's in exactly the right spot. I've got both sides in now. It was kind of bothering me. It, it's always bothered me when this was just straight fiberglass, you know? Um, but now that it's got headlights in it, it's really getting a lot more of that soul and a lot more of that personality and character back uh, to the front end. <laughs> I'm pretty stoked. Um, let me get the car on the ground and uh, we'll see what it looks like. So I'm sure that there was a lot simpler solutions that we could have come up with and I can almost guarantee that for like $9 on Amazon I could have bought some universal thing um, that I probably could have made work and not have to have done any of this work whatsoever. Um, but I mean at the same time this is my first time getting to print PETG, this is my first time using the, the temperature setting uh, thread nut things, um, using the well nuts that was new, getting that all figured out. Um, there's a lot of tricky little things getting to model all these 
these parts and all the tooling and getting into that kind of thought process. So it's almost worth that extra effort to be learning all these things along the way, at least to me. That's, how, that's kind of how I am and that's kind of what's always worked well for me is that you start getting in these skill sets, they become habits. Um, and that's what I'm trying to do um, with the printer. It's a big reason that I bought it. Um, but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I know it's been a really long time since my last video and I'm really sorry for that. Um, but I'm gonna do the best that I can to start getting content out to you guys regularly again uh, and start making some progress on this thing. I'm really excited. Um, so thank you guys so much. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know you're still there and I will see you guys in the next episode.